Hi folks, Kurt here. So I'm gonna do a real quick video on imaging the sun uh, using the dwarf too. And boy, I, I was already doing it a second ago and it's it's so easy. You just saw me bring out the uh, dwarf too. And the first thing you wanna do before you do anything is you wanna put the neutral density filters on the filter holder and open up your camera. and just pop it in, like so. That's the first thing you wanna do. If you really, if you wanna break your system, try imaging the sun without the filters on there because you're gonna ruin the camera sensors. So make sure you, by all means, put that on first. Then all you really have to do is you want to manually just point it up towards the sun like that, like so, and that's it. And then you're going to turn on the system and see if you can find it. So that's what I'm going to do next uh, using my little tablet here. Okay, let's go to work. Okay, we're on. So what you have to do is if you're looking on the screen, I'm, I'm hooked up. You'll notice on the, the wide field image it has the sun in it. And that's, that's awesome. I, I mean, so since you're using the wide field, it'll be real easy to find the sun. Usually, believe it or not, it's pretty tough to find the sun if you're doing it with normal solar imaging. <laughs> Unless you have like a little solar finder. It's kind of, kind of funny that the uh, sun's the hardest, one of the hardest things to find. But anyways, what you want to do now is center it into the wide field so you can see it into the telephoto lens. So we're just going to scroll up with the joystick. Oops, going the wrong way there. Oop, oop. There we go. All right, once you have it into the frame like you do, uh, next thing you want to do is you want to come over here to where it says feature and you want to make sure it says press the sun tracking thing and it says place dwarf on a flat object make sure it's within three degrees it is uh, ensure the neutral density filter is on it is and they give a recommendation for the, the, your settings you should have on your sun make sure it's recommended that you have the sun with an exposure of one to two hundredth of a second and zero gain so it says go to tracking so now it's tracking the sun so it should stay in the frame of view and now we can come over here and check our settings and our setting we're going to make sure it's at one to two hundred and we'll turn the gain down to zero okay then you just have to focus it now you can see i've already focused it here before i'll make it out of focus to see so let's say it's like that when you're first imaging well you want to focus it and so you can just do it until it's focused you can actually make it bigger and you'll see there's some sunspots on here there's a series of groupings of sunspots and you want to do it so they're all as best as you can get it. Now you'll notice they don't come in super perfect and I don't know if people, I don't know if you've heard this before, you might have heard of the word seeing versus transparency. Well this is seeing. It's you're never going to get it truly in focus when you're looking at the sun or you're doing planets. Uh, that's because of the atmospheric disturbance. That's what's causing this distortion. It's seeing conditions. And so what people do, they'll take a little video and then stack the video and it'll take the best of the clippings of the, from the video to produce an image. That's how they get a, a clear shot. But this is actually a really good shot right now of the sun. And you can see all the groupings of the thing. So I'm gonna just press photo. So now that's what it's taking a picture of. All right, now I'm gonna do a video. So I'm gonna go to video mode. Okay, folks, how you doing? It's another day, and I'm redoing my video of the sun because I actually did not image it for long enough in my previous video. So now I'm going to image it for over a minute. Everything's all set, and I'm going to press it to video mode. Oh, and by the way, here are my settings right now. I've I got it set for 1 320th of a second. Gain is at zero. I left everything else alone down there, so all I got to do is just turn on the video and let it record. Very good. So that was my video. 
Okay, and then I'll, and what I'll do is I'll try to do some minor processing on it and see what I can come up with with this little image. But you saw what I just did. This was like absolutely super quick to do this. Oh, hey, one other thing, folks. You'll notice that the joystick is not on here anymore. So when it's, oops, now I've done it. I took it way out of focus. Uh, it doesn't matter. When it's in sun tracking mode, your joystick goes away. So what you got to do is you got to turn off the tracking and then your joystick appears and you can see the sun's going all over the place. Anyways, just thought I'd bring that to your attention. But anyways, I'm pretty impressed with this uh, little telescope. Like I said, you saw how quick and easy it was. I mean, I was only out here for like five minutes doing this. Okay, folks, well, I hope you found that useful. As I said, the most important thing with doing this is make sure you have this filters on before you go aiming for the sun. Now, I'm not going to take them off right now because it's still facing the sun. What you want to do is you want to move the telescope away from the sun and then it's okay to take this thing off. But you don't want to take it off while it's still facing the sun because it might do damage to the camera sensors. Okay? Okay, folks. In this next step, I am going to take my 1 minute and 41 second video and I'm going to process that. Let me close it out on to play the whole video. So I'm going to use two different programs to process this part. And I will provide links to both of those. The first one is this program called PIP. And that's going to pre-process it. And then I'm going to do to use another program called AutoStacker. So here it goes. You open up PIP. You can add the source file. So here's that video. And here's what it looks like. Okay, so... Source files, we're going to make it solar, lunar, down here, make sure it's solar, lunar, full disk. Then we're going to come over here to image input. We'll pretty much leave everything alone here, except, yep, we're going to keep the Bayer, the raw images. So we're going to keep everything okay here. And then we're going to go over to processing options. And you want to make sure not to convert it to monochrome. So leave it in color. And we're going to keep the cropping, definitely keep the cropping. And everything else is the same. Image quality, we're not going to touch that. Animation, we're not going to do anything with that. Output options, we're going to make sure it says AVI. It seems to default to TIFF, but we're actually going to make a AVI, so it's still going to be a video. And make sure it says DIB raw and compressed. And everything else looks okay. So now we press do processing and then we got to come over here to press start processing and now it's actually going to do it this will take a few minutes it'll take it'll be quicker if it was not if I was on my other computer but I'm on my not so fast computer okay it's all done let's close this out and see what it did for us it created a separate folder and here's the actual the pip video and notice how it's no longer, it's, it's centered right onto the, the sun. Okay, it's still, oh, and by the way, it's still 1 minute and 41 seconds long. Okay, now let's go to the next part. Okay, and in this next part, I'm going to use Auto Stacker. Now, both PIP and Auto Stacker are absolutely free. And again, I'll provide links in the comments section. So, you want to open up that PIP file that we just created. I'll look for it. Okay. So you want to make sure it says surface and we'll leave everything else expand. Now I'd like to put crop down here. This is not oversampled, so we're gonna normal range. Yeah, let's leave it at four, that quality estimator. And then we're gonna put analyze. Again, this would be going quicker if I had my supercomputer. I know I'm on my laptop. Okay, so now what we have to do is we're going to come over to this part. I like to leave this thing at, for the sun anyways, for this type of image, I'm going to leave it at 24. And I'm going to put the minimum brightness probably around 25. You can play around with this it, you know, after you stack it the stacking goes pretty quick and you can uh, see what type of image you want to see if it gives it better if it changes it any bit but I've done this already and I determined that 25 was optimal for this object 
And you'll notice it puts these little squares into the image of the sun, and that's fine. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to the where it's a stack. I'll leave it a, a TIFF file. Now, you can have your choice now. You can either have it stack 30% of the 2,100 frames, or you can have it stack a certain number. Now, I'm going to have it go with 200 frames. And I'm so I'm going to change this to zero. So it's only going to stack 200 out of those 2,000. So that's about 10%, which is actually it's plenty, I think. Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to drizzle it. I'm going to leave drizzle off for now. I actually already tried drizzling for this object, and it didn't seem to work too well. Okay. Well, it's done. Let's see what type of image we've got. I'll just close this stuff out. Well, hello, folks. For this final processing, I'm going to use Photoshop. If you're already a photographer, you may already be familiar with Photoshop. If not, Photoshop does cost money. However, there are some free knockoffs that are very good and very powerful, and they work almost exactly like Photoshop. One of them is called GIMP, and the other one is called Photopea. I will provide links for both of those programs in the comments section. But anyways, let's see what AutoStacker gave us for their processing. This they, It produced two images. It produced this one, which is right in front of us right now. And it also produced this one. This one right here is, which says CONV, which stands for convolution. And it's sharper. Now I'm going to use this one, the one that's sharper, to do the final processing with. And again, I'm going to give a, just a real quick tutorial and nothing super fancy. So the first thing I like to do before I do anything is make a copy. Oh, by the way, here's what the full screen image the image produced. I'm, I just made it bigger so we can see what's going on. I'm going to make a copy. So I press duplicate, and here's the copy. The reason you want to make a copy is so you don't screw anything up. All right, so I'll make it bigger again. There we go, that's good. So notice how this sharper uh, image, it really does show a lot more surface detail than the one that was not sharpened. So that's why I'm I'm producing the, I'm, I'm going to use this one. But some people might like this one better without a lot of that surface detail. So I made a copy of the image and that's what I've got right now. And I'm going to make a layer. The first thing I want to do is I want to make some color, colorize the, the sun. The way to do that is I could go right in and colorize the whole thing, but I'd be colorizing the background. What you really want to do is make a mask. And the way to do that is you come over here to select. Actually, there's many ways to do it, but I'm just going to do this way. So color range. You can come over here to red, yellow, green, blues, magentas. But I'm going to do highlights. So I've got highlights. You can actually adjust it, you know, like doing this, like the whole thing there. But I'm, I'm just going to keep it like about like this. Press OK. Next thing I'm going to do is come back over to Select and come down here where it says Select and Mask. What that does is it produces that original mask, but I'm actually going to put a feather on here now just to featherize it so it's not as sharp. Press OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is come down here where it says, press this button where it says Layer Mask, and I'm going to highlight the layer mask. So now what it's going to do is anything I do is only going to affect the sun portion where it's the colorized mask and i'm going to come over here to image adjustment now i can adjust the colors by selective color i can do it by channel mixer or i could do it by color balance i'm actually just going to use the channel mixer right now highlight the red it's on the red channel selected right now so i'm actually going to increase the red to about 110 or 112 yeah 109 that's good and now I'm, I'm not going to do anything with the green. Here, I, I could show you what green does, but let's just leave green alone, and we'll go right to blue. And well, we're going to decrease the blue a bit. Notice how it became nice and yellowy color. So I kind of like that. We'll leave it alone. We'll do some more color adjusting. We can come over here, and I'm going to take the layer that we just did, and I'm going to press Add a Layer again. And we can go back to this Adjustments, come over here to color balance and we can adjust do a couple minor adjustments using this slider and that slider to make it even better that looks good there's one other 
really neat thing I want to show you, and we're going to come over to, to where it says filter, down to camera raw filter. Now this is a very powerful tool, this camera raw filter. You can do a lot of things with it. Let's come up here to basic. You can adjust the contrast if you want. That makes it brighter or dimmer. Same with exposure. Exposure also makes it really bright if you want. Dimmer. There's some other things that are, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm gonna leave it the same brightness. You can come over here to where it says texture. And when I did the texture, it seems to make more detail on the surface. I may keep that a little bit like that to six. Clarity seems to make it more detailed, but I don't like that detail that it's putting in there, so I'm going to just keep it back to zero. Also, dehaze, that's another function, but I'm, I'm actually not going to put any dehaze on here right now. We also have vibrance and saturation. That actually makes it, oh, that made it a, a bit. I kind of like what that did, the, the saturation. It made it colorful, I think. Also, what we can do is we press this detail. You'll notice that it has this sharpening function, and it also has denoise. Now, the denoise, if I press that, it actually made it smoother. I really, I don't know if I wanted that. I sort of kind of wanted to keep the, the surface detail on there. You can press sharpening, and you can actually put more fine detail on the surface, too. So let's keep that how it is, and you know, a little bit of the denoise on here. We'll leave it like that. And I'll press OK. Here is with it, with it, with it, and without it. And I kind of like the way it looks with it. OK. Now we're going to press flatten image. And I think that looks pretty good the way it is. But there's one more thing. You notice the outside here it looks kind of, well, it looks pixelated. Now the reason it looks pixelated, or one of the reasons it looks pixelated, is because the capturing I was using bin 2 by 2 they're eventually going to put an option when you're capturing to bin one by one, which will give you more resolution, and hopefully that won't be as bad as pixelated like it is right now. But in the meantime, what you can do, you can actually smooth that outside a bit. Now, the way to do that, or one way to do that, is to produce another layer mask. Come back here to color range, and I'm actually going to make it not as bright, if you will. So I sort of dimmed the range down and it took it inward a bit. I'll press OK. And what, I'm going to do to, what I am going to do now is come back here to select a mask like I did before. We can shift the edges in a little bit more. Or actually what I'm going to do is quite there yet, I'm going to feather it. And now I'm going to shift it in a little bit, shift that edge in a little bit. There's a reason for my madness here. Okay, very good. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to select and press inverse. Now what that did is it's protect, it's going to protect the sun. So I'm actually protecting the sun, but nothing else. And what you can do, one thing you can do is come over here to where it says filter and where it says blur, we're going to put blur more. And look what it did. I don't know if you guys saw that. Look, it actually blurred it quite a bit. You can actually press it again and it actually did a little bit more of the blur function. So that looks pretty good right now. Here it is before, after. And one thing you can do, or another thing you can do, is take this whole thing here and press add another layer to it. And it actually blurred it again. And we can do it a third time as well. So each time I do it, it blurs the outside even more. But it keeps the whatever we have in the center, that's protected by the mask. But only the outside is uh, blurred, which is what we want. Well, I think that looks good, and I'm going to press flatten image, and I'm going to call it quits. I think that's good for my quick tutorial using Photoshop. Now, before I let you go, you can use some of these same techniques in Photoshop to process the single image that was captured as well. The single image probably wouldn't look as good as video with the stacking, but it's still, I mean, for a quick processing uh, you can do you can do a pretty good job with it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.